This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey guys, it's Kay. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. My name is Kay. I'm a professional home organizer and soprano here in the Boston area, and I am here to inspire you to live a more organized life. So today we're gonna do a little bit of a controversial video. Oh my gosh, the tea. Oh my gosh, the scandal. No, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine. We're gonna talk about some organizing trends that need to go in 2021. Okay, disclaimers. <laughs> I We're just having a little fun here. We're just spilling a little tea. We're just having a little sass moment. Uh, this is not to insult anyone. If you enjoy these trends or practices or like this stuff works for you, that's great. You do you, you keep doing you. I am just a person with opinions and I'm going to tell you the things that I have better opinions uh, about organizing and house stuff that I think well, that I personally, Kay Patterson, am tired of. Before we get into anything, I'd like to mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. We love Skillshare. They've been a big, big supporter of the channel and we love Skillshare. So I'll talk a little bit about Skillshare later, but like right now, let's, let's get it. Let's get into it. Okay, number one, and I'm not coming for anybody, but rainbow order everything. Can we not? I know it looks so beautiful when you do it right. It looks so beautiful when everything is in the Roy G. Biv order and things are color coded, it's so magical. And color coding is actually a really good way to organize, especially with children, because they don't have to read words if they're if they're young, if they're young and can't read. Um, it's easy for them to identify colors and pictures and things like that. And it's really fun to look at, especially in closets. I still do it in closets when I have my um, shirts lined up. I like to do a little rainbow order there, it just helps me pick out the right thing but doing it everywhere and expecting people to maintain it can we stop can we stop that especially in places like the refrigerator or the pantry which is an incredibly dynamic space and by dynamic space i mean a space that is changing all the time you are getting stuff in your pantry and you're getting stuff in your refrigerator stuff coming in and out it's just it's not i don't think it's realistically maintainable it looks awesome but set it up in a way that you can actually maintain. Save the rainbow order for places that can have the rainbow order, your closets, your bookshelves, all that stuff if you love it. But let's, let's keep it out of dynamic spaces where you just, it's impossible to maintain. Are you gonna buy red packaging every week of the same food? Are you gonna do that? Okay. Number two, using storage units for like what I think is not a great reason, which is, taking this stuff that you can't fit in your house and just putting it there and never going there and getting stuff ever again, just letting it die there. Can we stop doing that? Storage units are so amazing if you are in a life transition, if you um, have, if you're doing an estate sale, if you are in between, if you're, if you're doing like renovations on your house and you need somewhere to put your furniture, that's actually a great way to use a storage unit. When I was in between houses and in between condos, uh, a lot of our stuff got put in a storage unit and it was great because it was like temperature controlled and it was, it was just really, it was a wonderful experience. And afterward, it's really easy for like the movers to come and bring your stuff in and you don't have to worry about, you know, how your stuff in a place but if you just have a storage unit because you cannot fit these things in your house and you don't want to get rid of them then you need to have you, you need to have a talk with yourself is the stuff worth that much that you want to keep it but not in your house because you can't fit it um, and maybe I'll, I'll give a little bit of leeway for people who uh, are just you know starting out and maybe they got inherited some furniture and they need some place to put it before they buy their big first house okay okay but if you're just shoving things out the door because you don't want to actually get rid of them stop stop it number three can we stop buying cheap plastic food containers not gonna say any brands not gonna name any names but you know what i'm talking about the kind that you can get from the grocery store where you lose all the lids or you find different lids for the one container and when you put tomato in them it gets all like red and disgusting and you wash them and then they get that white uh like like build up in there and the plastic and then you don't know what to do with that you keep washing it you keep washing it and it won't come out can you stop to stop buying those I dislike these cheap plastic food storage containers and I have used these in the past. I have I have bought these 
a lot before. Um, but I have stopped using these because they, A, uh, you shouldn't probably heat your food up in them. Uh, I know that a lot of them claim now that to be bisphenol free, but uh, still heating things up in plastic, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know, not the best. Two, they don't really clean up that great, like ever. I've always found that they have like watermarks on them or they, they, have, they get the tomato stain or the onion smell if you put onions in there. So I would always suggest that you go ahead and make the investment in either glass storage containers or a very, like a nicer plastic container. Um, glass is always my first recommendation. I, there are some affordable glass containers you can buy them at the dollar store. I will link it down below. It's, it's like just, just bite the bullet. And I feel like these cheap plastic containers are just that they're cheap. So people buy a lot of them and then they're everywhere. <laughs> when I go to people's houses and I order organized kitchens and I see the, fo the food storage container storage, it's always like everywhere. It's always like some are in a drawer and some are in the supper cabinet and some are in the lower cabinet. And like, this one doesn't have a lid. This one has like two lids, but it doesn't really, they don't really go with the, the container. It's, it's always a disaster. If you make a little bit of an investment in a nicer food storage container, hope preferably a glass one you will take better care of it because the the cheap ones are like flimsy you don't you don't i think psychologically you don't really care about it so they just get mistreated uh yes they have their place uh, if you have them and you want to get new for food storage containers i would encourage you to reuse them they're great for drawer organizers that's the way i've reused them at some clients houses after i've encouraged them to go ahead and bite the bullet and buy nicer food storage containers but can we can we can we stop can we stop Number four, can we stop the hoarding of beauty products and cosmetics? Now, I think this is less of an issue now that like beauty YouTube and like beauty blog space, I think we've gotten over the hump of like, oh my gosh, there's a new product, I need it. And we've gotten over the whole like limited edition uh, trick that beauty brands play on us. It's nothing is ever limited edition. You can, you, you can get it. And if you can't get any missed out on it, oh well, you know? So I think that for the most part, we've stopped doing this. But for those of you who are still buying every new release and holding on to it and having it go bad, please just stop, please. Makeup is just like like food, but it, it, it goes bad eventually. Even your eyeshadows, even your your powder products, even that stuff goes bad. It's bad. like lipsticks go bad, uh, mascaras go bad the fastest, um, and eyeliner stuff that you so just avoid like just collecting these items just for the sake of collecting them. But hey, if it makes you happy, it's none of my business. But if you needed someone to to give you a little bit of tough love. I'm I'm here for it. Stop. Stop. Just stop. You have you have that eyeshadow color already. You do. You might even have two. Three. You have it. You you're good. You don't need another eyeshadow palette. So I'm, I'm talking to myself a little bit too. Let's be honest. While we're spilling the tea, we'll take a little break to talk about our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including entrepreneurship, cooking, photography, scrapbooking, and interior design and more. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life with a lot of them being shorter than 30 minutes. So you can move your creative journey forward without putting your whole life on hold. Since I'll be decorating and setting up a new apartment soon, I have logged back in to take some interior design classes and I was super excited to see this interior design class for renters from Albino's and it was right on time because we're renting for a few years before buying our next home and I wanted some ideas on how I could customize our space that were renter friendly. She's got some banger ideas and there are a bunch of other really awesome interior design classes and I'm going to be re-watching some of those <laughs> really soon. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable with an annual subscription being less than $10 a month. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and supporting creative entrepreneurs everywhere. All right, let's get back to the tea. Number five, five, over labeling. <laughs> I found in my experience that I am a KISS organizer, a keep it simple stupid organizer. If there are too many labels, if there is too much micro labeling, micro organizing, I get stre I'm stressed out. I'm like, why you need to label everything? Just 
think more like macro organizing and broader categories it's going to help you in the long run and it's going to help people in your house figure out where stuff goes like if you have and, and i i it, i encounter this mostly with filing paper filing people love to micro organize their files and i'm telling you i'm just stop stop you are going to drive yourself insane by having not just a taxes 2016 file but a december taxes 2015 file november taxes 2015 file september taxes 2015 just one category will 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 get the job done you'll be able to to separate them if you need to but don't you don't need to it's taxes it's painful no matter how it's divided you know what i'm saying number six hacks that offer storage solutions look all cute but they don't really solve the problem that you actually you actually have that there's a problem but it doesn't solve it i'm talking about things like oh my gosh i have too many shoes what do i do oh buy this stew shoe organizer and everything will be solved well yes you will have a place to put all of those shoes but didn't you say that you didn't wear a lot of those shoes People are like, well, I can't find, you know, uh, my favorite pair of socks when I need them because I have all these other socks. Well, get rid of a lot of the socks that, that you don't like. Don't figure out a creative way to store them so that you can like see the favorite socks. Uh, have a come, come to whatever God you worship moment about do you really need this stuff? You don't really, I mean, the clever little hacks are like kind of fun or whatever, um, but I, I, can we stop? finding solutions for like not the real problem. The real problem is you might not, you might not need the stuff you're trying to organize. You know what I mean? Number seven, decluttering just for like the trend of it all and not really for like solving a problem just because it's like a cool thing to do. Don't get me wrong, decluttering is great. I love to declutter and I, that is my specialty. I like don't really love the like organizing solution thing that I do with clients as much as I love helping them realize that they're not using some of the stuff and like, let's get it out the door. I love that. That is like the part of organizing that I love the most. But if you are doing it because you watched The Minimalists and you feel like you need to get rid of all your stuff, uh, just so just slow down just just a minute. I have seen so many instances of people saying they watched a show, they got inspired and they got rid of like everything and now they can't find what they need. They, they're they lost, they got rid of their scissors, then they needed to cut something and oh, it's, they're gone, I got rid of them in the attack. Just, just keep a proper head on you and only get rid of the things that are not serving you. And if everything that you have in your home is serving you, then you don't have to declutter. It's none of my business. I am not the decluttering police. If you what you're doing works for you, that is your business. Um, but I don't want people to declutter just because of the trend of it all. I feel like if you need to solve a problem, then solve the problem. And if some of that problem involves decluttering, that's great. But if it doesn't, solve the problem another way. In that vein, uh, this is number uh, eight. Can we stop shaming people for owning items? Like that's can we can we just stop? I have watched so many of these minimalist house tours because they're fun to watch. Not because I'm a minimalist. I'm definitely not. I Anyone can tell you, like, I love variety. I, like, have stuff. I like owning items. But can we stop shaming people for owning items? Because at the bottom of all of these minimalist house tours, I see comments like, oh, you're not a minimalist. You have eight shirts instead of six. Oh, that doesn't look very minimalist. Or how can you be, like, how can you call yourself a minimalist? It just looks organized. Can we... Can can we, can we stop? It is okay to own items. It is okay to have possessions. If you are a minimalist, you have everything you need to live and be happy and nothing else. And if that is four shirts for you, cool. If that's 30 shirts for you, cool. It's none of my business whether or not I can qualify you as a minimalist. There's, unless there's some like Bible I don't know about for the minimalists, um, just can we, can we stop shaming people for actually having items? Can we just, can we stop? Just Number nine, organizing things for aesthetics, but not science. This only applies to refrigerator organizing. I am tired of seeing pictures of organized refrigerators and I'm like, ooh, eggs in the door, not a great choice. Or like milk in the door, I mean, maybe if you drink a lot of milk and it's like 
used up really quickly, it's okay, but the door is the warmest part of your fridge and your milk is gonna go bad the fastest. And they have all these like cute containers and like color coordinated things, but the real science behind food storage is how you should store things in your refrigerator. And I just, there's something about seeing these like ultra tidy fridges, but not organized for like food science that just, it upsets me. Maybe because I am a, like a child of science, I, I love science and I love food science and I love having my food last longer and I organize that way. It may not be the prettiest, but I can eat my kale like probably five days later than you. And lastly, but not least, is the things to declutter slash throw away lists like everywhere on YouTube and on Pinterest and whatever. Can we? Now I understand that these can be really helpful. I'm not saying that they're all like really useless content or something like, like you don't need like five towels, throw them away. But I always want to reiterate that the things that you have in your home and that you use are individual to you. You are an individual. If I need three cameras, <laughs> I can have three cameras and still live a fulfilled life and still be happy. Or if I like don't need 5,000 towels, I can make that decision. And it, I know that these lists are really helpful. They can help people, you know, make decisions about stuff they're not actually using and that they're really great. But I also want to reiterate that what you don't need in your home is individual for you and that that particular list or a thing, you know, 20 things to throw away in 2020, you know, that might not be like relevant for your individual life. We are all individuals. So um, it, you should ask yourself some questions or hire someone like a professional organizer to help you decide what is working and what is not. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope no one was offended. We're just having a little fun. We're just spilling a little tea. But maybe some serious things were said. I don't know. These are just my opinions. Let me know if you do any of these things or if you're tired of any of this stuff too, down in a comment below. All right, guys, I hope you're having a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are in the world. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.